uh, actually, thank you both for setting this up. Um, and really what we're going to show today is our, is a software called OptiGate. And what OptiGate is, is it's an employee self-service portal. And this is available currently for any district that is on Envision. And I believe every district that's on the call today is on Envision. And what OptiGate allows is it's going to allow an employee to log in through really anywhere that they have, you know, internet access. It could be a laptop, workstation, iPad, smartphone. And what it's going to allow you to do is really two things. It's going to allow you, if you will, to allow your employees to log in to get information in real time from Envision. And it's also going to allow you, and this is something your, your school district will be able to determine based upon employee group, is to allow, is to determine what do you want to allow your employees to do in regards to changing data within OptiGate. And I'll walk you through all this. And then if you allow a data change in OptiGate, for instance, an address change, would you want that address change to flow directly into Envision? Or would you want that address change to have to be approved before it flows through into Envision? So I'm hoping everyone can see my screen. And what you're looking at right now is I'm logged in as an employee. Her name is Jill Administrator. And what's currently going on is I'm connected to an Envision demo database. So in real time, it's pulling the information from that demo database into OptiGate. Um, for any districts that are on the call that have uploaded employee photos into Envision, those photos will flow through from Envision into OptiGate. And that's what I'm looking at here. A um, couple of things I want to point out before I dive in and kind of walk you through the various, you know, pieces of data that you can share with your employees in OptiGate. Um, one of the things is you can really customize the look and feel of, of OptiGate to match, if you will, your district's website. And what I mean by that is this. What appears in the top left-hand corner, you can you know, customize that to be your school, school district name. And you can customize the you know, color, too, to match your district's colors. The banner that is appearing here, you can have that be your district banner. You can have multiple banners uploaded, and what will occur if you have that is it'll spend a few seconds on one banner and then scroll through to any other banners that you have set up. I'm going to scroll my way to the bottom part of the screen, and, and under sponsors, you can determine what appears here. In our you know, demo database, one of my support people uploaded their dog, but obviously you wouldn't have that. You would have whatever it is that you want to have have appear there. And you can also have this drill into a URL address if you wanted to. And then down below, you can determine what's going to appear uh, on the bottom part of that screen, your, your school district name or really, you know, anything else you want to have there. So I'm logged in as, you know, Jill Administrator. And you'll notice down below here, it's given me a timeline and, it, and it's given me tasks. Really, the idea behind the timeline is this. Um, an administrator of the portal can push out a timeline request to one employee, or a timeline entry, I should say, to one employee, a group of employees, which would be based upon Envision employee group, or the whole entire district. In this you know, particular instance, what I have on the timeline here is, is you know, summer break. And, and then business hours over the summer. And you can see what happened there when I clicked expand. It's just given me additional information on each, you know, timeline entry. You know, if a pay date was going to change at, at your school district or there was just a piece of information, a time sensitive piece of information that you wanted to push out, you know, to your employees that could be done through the, you know, timeline. The other thing an employee will see in the timeline is any data change 
that is made within OptiGate, it will give the employee a status of where that, that data change stands, if you will, from within the timeline. Over on the right here, you're gonna see task. And the idea behind the task is this, an administrator can push out a, a task to an individual employee, a group of employees, or really the whole entire district. And with the task, what an administrator can also do is attach a file to the task. In this case, we have a task summer. I hope everyone had a, a wonderful summer. Please submit all you know, personnel changes. We attached a file that, that was just a sunset, but what you could actually do is attach forms to this task that have to be completed. And that's a simple enough thing to do. So what I'm gonna do now, and because I have multiple districts on the call, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll reserve questions until the end, but I'll make sure that I leave at least 15 minutes at the end of the demo so anyone can ask questions. Um, what I'm going to do now is just go through each one of the tabs on the top part of the screen here and show you all of the possible pieces of information you can share with your employees. As, as I mentioned, um, you can determine based upon Envision Employee Group what menu options an employee can see, so what tabs they can see up above, and then, then even down below here within for instance, the you know personal tab, what pieces of information can they see? And what will more than likely happen, and a good example is this tab here, credentials, for your you know civil service employees, you're not gonna share at the very least certifications with them because it would be a blank screen and you really just wouldn't wanna deal with the phone calls of somebody asking you what that means and why is it blank for them. So you're going to be able to customize based upon employee group what your employees can see. So personal, and I'm just going to work my way from left to right here. I mentioned earlier how the portal can be accessed through a tablet. It can be accessed through, through a smartphone. I really like to you know, actually emphasize that because what I envision happening is a lot of employees not accessing this through a computer like I am today, though they obviously can, but accessing it through a smartphone. And what's really nice is like any website today, where if you've accessed it on your smartphone, it gives you a mobile friendly version. Um, OptiGate's gonna do the same exact thing. It's gonna be a mobile friendly version where your employees will be able to easily navigate among the menu options and be able to easily update data for those instances where you allow them to do so. So uh, I'm on the personal tab and I'm gonna work my way from left to right. The first piece of information we're sharing, you can see is basic demographic information with your employees. The second option is gonna be you know, addresses and this will be any address set up on the employee information screen in Envision. And the capability exists here, and you can push this out district-wide or just restricted by employee group to allow your employees to edit the current address set up in Envision. And if you allow that edit, you'll be able to determine whether you want that change to flow direct into Envision or to require approval before it flows through into Envision. The next tab is going to be emergency contact information. Same as with addresses, if you're going to show this to your employees, you can allow them to edit emergency contacts or add a, a emergency contacts throughout the gate. The next tab is going to be employee you know, dependents. And once again, you can allow your employees to add dependents through the portal or to edit existing dependent information through the portal. And then the last tab under you know, personal, or the last option under personal is contact information. And this is gonna be any phone number set up for this employee within Envision and any email addresses set up for this employee within Envision. 
and and your district can make a determination whether or not you want to allow them to to edit the phone number, edit the email that is currently in Envision, or to add a new phone number or to add a new email. Okay. So that's all the possible data you can share with your employees on the personal tab. The next tab I'm going to go to is, you know, payroll. And within payroll, the the first, you know, option, the, the first tab available on the bottom is contract and earnings. And on contract and earnings, what this is going to show is any earning that was set up in Envision on the appointment screen. It's going to push that earning out so your employees can, you know, view it. The second option is going to be employee tax withholding information. And this will show the employee their current federal and state filing status within Envision. The next tab is going to be employee tax forms. And what this is going to do is for any W-2 that has been printed and posted out of Envision, your employees are going to be able to download and view that W-2. And I'll just click on one of these just so you can see what that you know looks like. And you can see what I what I just did with that single click is I've downloaded a W-2 from the you know portal. This is the employee's you know 2017 W-2 that was that was produced out of Envision. The next tab that's available is employee direct deposit information, and this is just going to share anything that is set up for this employee on the direct deposit screen within payroll. To download and view any paycheck stub, any direct deposit stub that was printed and posted out of Envision. And I just click download on this, this particular one here. And you can see there it is. Now for every district on the call, I hope you're aware of this, within the Envision product itself, the capability exists within payroll to email, you know, direct deposit stubs in place of printing out the paper documents. This kind of takes it a step further where your employees, instead of getting an email, though you can still send the email out, they could log it into the portal to download and if they wanted to print out that stub. And that was under pay history. The next option is going to be employee deduction dollar amounts. And this will be for informational purposes. This is going to be any active payroll deduction set up for the employee. So that was all of the possible pieces of information you could share with your employees from from the payroll tab, the payroll button up above here. The next button I'm going to go to is employee benefit information. And what this is going to show your employees is any current active benefit set up for them on the benefit tab on employee information within Envision Human Resources. And then the bottom part is going to show them their current retirement membership information that is set up in the Envision Retirement Membership Information screen within Human Resources. <clears throat> the next option is going to be Employee Credentials. And under Employee Credentials, you're going to be able to share with your employees current certification information set up for them. Obviously, this particular screen certifications, you're only going to share with your instructional employees. A non-instructional employee wouldn't have that filled in. The thing, too, to keep in mind, and I, and I know I mentioned this a little bit earlier, is, you know, you can restrict based upon employee group what pieces of information the employee can see. 
if you had a scenario with one of these screens where maybe you didn't have the information filled in in Envision for that particular employee group, you could leave that particular screen turned off for them until you got the you know information updated. So the very first option is you know certifications. The second option you can share with your employees is education. And on the education tab here, what this is going to do is it's going to pull in from the courses screen in Envision Human Resources any courses you have filled in for that particular employee. And that screen in Envision is really a multi-use screen. And what I mean by that is school districts can use that to fill in in-service classes, graduate classes, undergraduate classes, and anything filled in on that screen for the, for the employee will appear here. The final option available on this particular tab, credentials, is going to be employee degrees. And that's going to be any degree that the employee holds that is filled in in Envision. Okay. The next tab I'm going to go to is the employee attendance tab. And in going here, the very first thing the employee is going to see is current balances in Envision. And, you know, let me emphasize this because I really haven't up until now. Anytime the employee accesses a particular screen within the portal, the information they're going to see is instantaneous. The information is going to be in real time. So in real time, this employee is seeing their current attendance balances in Envision. When I click on calendar, what the employee is going to see here is their current workday calendar in Envision. And it's showing this employee in real time that they took vacation back on the week of August 6th. There's a holiday that they won't be working in the beginning of you know, September. I'm going to skip the time off request option for a minute and go to daily punches and timesheets. So I just went to the daily punches tab and I want to explain what the employee is seeing on this particular option. For any district on the call that is using timepiece, and timepieces are, you know, time and attendance software, what is occurring under daily punches is in real time for any pay period, and it'll always default obviously to the current pay period, the employee is going to see their punch in and punch outs. And in this particular instance, this employee is seeing that today, Wednesday, she punched in at 7.12 a.m. So in real time, the employee is going to be able to see their punch in and their punch outs from timepiece. The timesheet option, what this is going to do is it's going to show any employee that punches in and out via timepiece their timesheet for that particular day. And as you can see, for each day for this pay period, it's giving the employee their punch in, their punch out, their working hours, and their paid hours. And this is coming straight from timepiece. So I, I covered current balances, calendar, daily punches, and timesheets. I'm now going to go to time off request and kind of go through what this screen does. Um, what this screen is going to allow for is an employee can enter a time off request. Once the employee enters the time off request, your district can determine how does that time off request have to be approved before it becomes either a daily attendance record in Envision or an attendance event within Timepiece. And let me explain what I mean by Envision versus Timepiece. Um, for any district that is, you know, utilizing Timepiece, based upon work group and work subgroup, your district is going to be able to determine if an employee enters a time off request, do you want that time off request to flow into Timepiece first, or do you want that time off request to flow directly into Envision. The first district that went up on Optigate, this was probably their favorite feature within the portal because this 
Latino district had approximately 1,400 people punching in and punching out. They basically had their whole entire district punching in and out via timepiece. And they literally had two part-time people at the district. It was their only job to input uh, attendance events in the timepiece. The portal is going to take the place of that data entry. The employee who is going to request a day off will request it from within OptiGate. It'll be approved within OptiGate and it'll flow through as an event within timepiece. So a district will have the capability to determine does the time off request flow through into timepiece first or, to, or does it go direct into Envision? If your district's just on Envision, then obviously every time off requests will ultimately flow through into Envision. So I'm going to pick a day. Oops. I'm going to pick a day to request time off. Down below, you'll notice a request type. Based upon the pay profile on the employee's primary appointment, you're going to be able to control what request types, what attendance codes the employee can pick when requesting time off. So you can have different attendance codes, different request types appearing for you know different pay profiles within Envision. So the employee is going to pick the date or dates. They're going to indicate whether they're requesting a full day off, a partial day off. They are required to type in the reason why they're they're making the request. You know, they can type in as something as simple as, you know, vacation day. If your district requires something more, you know, detailed, they would obviously type in a more detailed explanation. So uh, I've requested the day. It's a full day. It's vacation. I'm going to click on request. That time off request has now been, you know, successfully sent. Let me explain what that means. What that means is whoever is set up to approve this person's time off request, that person has now received the time off request, that person will approve or you know, disapprove the time off request from within OptiGate, from within the portal. And what that person will do is they'll go to an uh, approvals button within OptiGate the time off request will be available to them and they can either approve or reject the time off request. We have an enhanced version of the portal. Within the enhanced version, what would occur in that particular instance is the person who is responsible for approving the time off request could either log into the portal to approve the time off request or what would happen is he or she would receive an email with the time off request and they could approve or you know disapprove the time off request from within the email. Okay. So what that was is what I've just done and it's probably the first time I've ever done one of these presentations without fielding questions throughout the presentation just with the you know, number of, you know, school districts on the call. I thought it was better I go through it first. Um, I've just given you a quick look and feel for all the various options available in OptiGate. I think what I'm going to do now is really turn it over to any questions anyone has. A lot of this I went through, you know, quickly. So I'd imagine there's a lot of questions out there. Okay, anyone with any questions? Okay, Chris or Richard, anything you want to add on our end? Uh, I mean, I guess one thing we can add is the, uh, the bulk load procedure. Yes, uh, I'll let you talk about that, Richard. Sure. So uh, when you guys are going to be deploying this product, um, one of the big pieces about it would be how we uh, do the initial setup. Um, we are putting in place a process that will allow us to go behind the scenes and envision and also, you know, linking to the Active Directory.
to extract employee information and create a file that we will then upload into the portal for the districts. Uh, this way they won't have to manually enter, you know, hundreds of employees. Um, and also using this feature, we are capable of importing certain subsets of employees, users, based on buildings, employee groups, a, uh, HR, payroll, active status, uh, basically just any kind of subgroup that the district would choose to upload. This makes the process a little easier for launching the OptiGate. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Yeah, and really what you know Richard's talking about is I like, think of the districts on the call. There's there's a few of them that are extremely large districts. So if you're looking at a scenario where you're looking to potentially get a logins for for a thousand employees to OptiGate at once, we have a process in place to to get them in there quickly for you. And once the districts are at the point in which we are able to do that in the timeline, I will contact and work with the district and whomever else directly in order to get that taken care of. This way we're not kind of leaving them high and dry. Right, exactly. Ralph, there's a question in the chat. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention to the chat. Um, all right. Let's see what we got here. Will the OptiGate to, for employees to enter information to digital forms? Yes, um, thank you for, for the question. Will OptiGate have the capability for employees to enter information to digital forms, you, you know, W4 direct deposit changes to be approved and processed? Yes, um, with OptiGate, and if any district is interested in OptiGate, you want to learn about OptiGate, then our pricing, Tamara, Tim, Susie at Edutech can get that information out to you. Um, when we price out OptiGate, we actually price it out for a base version of OptiGate and an enhanced version of OptiGate. The enhanced version of OptiGate, what that's going to offer, you know, to a district. I mentioned the one piece, which is the capability for an approver to approve a time off request or any other data change made from OptiGate via an email. The other thing the enhanced version of OptiGate is going to offer is the you know question asked. And that's the capability for, and we're, we just completed the W4 form capability. And what that is, is the capability for an employee to request a tax withholding change, fill out a W-4 form, fill out the form within OptiGate, electronically sign it within OptiGate, submit the tax withholding change along with the W-4 change, and the end result would be having that, you know, W-4 that was electronically filled out in OptiGate electronically signed, having that flow through to the file attachment screen within human resources under the, you know, payroll drop down and having that flow through into Envision along with the tax withholding screen. As I said, the, you know, W-4 form, we just got, got that completed. With that in place, we're going to look at, you know, other forms where it makes sense to incorporate that capability into an and that will be available in the enhanced version. Oh, actually, thank you. Um, um, uh, actually, any other questions? Either. Hey, Ralph, this is Chris. I just want to jump in on something really quick. You may have touched on this already, but. Uh, there is the ability within the admin area of the portal itself to allow people to either see or not see, and then with that, also give them the option of being able to edit certain information for approval or not. Uh, so that, you know, besides going straight through to have the whole workflow piece involved in this, there's still at least a, a short-term level of approval process that could be done uh, where, like I said, you could set up menus and options for approval or not, or just go ahead and let the information be uh, pre-approved, so to speak, as soon as the 
employee commits a transaction, it goes right into Envision. Uh, so that's another another option that we have here with this. Okay, thank you, Chris. Okay, anyone with any questions at all? Okay, um, well, if anyone thinks of anything, by all means, feel free to communicate it to, to either Tamara, Susie, Tim, or really anyone at the RIC. If it's something they're not sure about, they'll reach out to us. If anyone is interested in, you know, pricing on Optigate, by all means, uh, or, you know, reach out to Edutech. They have that information available. They can supply you with the quote. And this is available today. Um, this isn't something we're showing where you have to wait six months, you have to wait a year. This is available today. So this is something where if your district ha has been waiting a long time for this, and I know a lot of districts have been, it's, it's probably been the number one you know, question I've been asked in you know, user group meetings over really the last few years. When are we gonna have something like this? Um, it's available today. It's just what we're doing right now is we're doing what I like to call a soft rollout. And what a soft rollout is, is we asked every regional information center to select a few, a few districts they would like to offer Optigate out, you know, out to first, mainly because with the volume of districts we have, we couldn't bring every district up on Optigate today if every district wanted it. And we have approximately 360 districts today on Envision out of the 470 districts. So I can tell you for everyone that's on the call today, you are handpicked by, by Tamara, Tim, and the folks at Edutech. So I'm guessing you must have expressed interest in the self-service portal over the last few years. And, and, and you are the districts that, you know, Edutech felt would, would want to go up first. And to be honest, they wanted you to be first in line. So as I said, if you're interested, let them know. They can, uh, they can get pricing out to you. And you know, and this is a this is available today. So, you know, if you want it to go up right away, we could we could definitely make that happen. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I thank everyone for their time. And as I said, any questions at all? If you think of anything, let let the Edutech folks know, and they'll either answer your question or if they're not sure, they'll uh, they'll ask us. Thank you. I think.